You love the intensity, the talking of Dylan Brooks. Huh? Tough guy, he's an arrogant guy. Dylan Brooks embracing the villainous role. Anybody I speak with in the Canadian basketball circles, the way they talk about you, and then the way things are portrayed from an NBA standpoint, I'm like, it can't be the same person. Mm. What do you make of the of the villain character that that you've been portrayed as? I think it's just a persona. Um, when I get on the court, um, I just go into that persona. It's kind of like, you know, what Kobe did uh, when he was going through his hardships um, with creating the Black Mamba, just trying to kind of distract yourself away from all the noise and just putting it all into the game itself or into a persona. I think that's why they gave me, you know, or created this villain roles because, you know, I play aggressive, I play physical, and then I do a little trash talking as well. And, and it seems like you embrace this though. Yeah. I would say that my teammates, they would love me, but anybody else, they would hate me. What is it about it that you like the most? Um, just getting under people's skin, um, seeing them just get, you know, helter skelter. Because when they play against me, it's like, it's like a war. It's like physicality. Every single time you come down the floor, I'm right in your ear all the time. Yeah, I hear you crying to the ref, and that's when I, that's when I love it. That's when I know I got you. A few moments ago, during pregame warmups, LeBron walking over to Brooks having a very low-key conversation. That little pregame deal with LeBron, did you feel you had him then? Uh, I felt like I always had him. You and LeBron have that exchange. There are people out there that say, maybe you shouldn't do that. What were you thinking? I don't care, he's old. <laughs> I poke bears. Um, I don't respect no one until they come and give me 40. I feel like that series was thrown upon me because of the words that I say, but I've been saying things all year, I mean, won 50 games. Your level of understanding the game of basketball is at a fan level, and yet y'all, you running around talking about a dynasty? The dynasty starts after you, not with you. There's a lot of noise around you, as you know. Does that bother you? At first, you know, I didn't like it, and you know, that's why I said I didn't like the villain role because it affected the game of basketball. But, um, you know, now it just doesn't affect me. It's just another thing, it's part of my life. That was an impressive showing tonight. Hey, thank you, appreciate it, appreciate it. You should give the mic to Draymond. Make him talk about me. What was that? Make, make him keep talking about me so I can play better. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh my goodness. Maybe sometimes I gotta watch what I say, but you know, it's, I gotta, you know, use it strategically. And it's paid off for you, Dylan. Mm -hmm. Like there, there was some talk, oh man, no team's gonna touch this guy. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. You got paid. You mentioned Brooks as a guy who was out there that the Rockets should look at. It appears that they were listening to you. Yeah, they were listening to me. I, I, I'm sure they were listening to Dylan Brooks because the guy loves to talk. <laughs> I guess Houston was looking for a guy who, you know, fits my mold, and they needed a guy who is not scared to ruffle with the all stars and the superstars, and then that physicality and that leadership. You know, so um, I'm happy that I could just shut up people who was thinking I was, you know, down and out. I have a question for you that you probably haven't been asked in a while. Mm -hmm. where, where do you feel your actual game has grown the most? I've definitely grown in my defensive just mindset, you know. I feel like that's why where I mostly got paid. It's because I'm one of the most elite defenders in the NBA. I'm relentless when it comes to it. And then for me too, as well, as just being more of a leader, having that leadership, being more vocal. Dylan Brooks, just another great player from Canada. The Canadian basketball continues to get better and better. Jordy was telling us yesterday, look, if we don't have a defensive first mindset on this team, we're selling ourselves short. Where do you feel you fit in the FIBA game, especially with a little more physicality? How do you feel you kind of fit into what this group is going to have to do? Just bringing that physicality because they allow it. There's no, it's not no really too much ticky tack fouls. And then just, I guess, being the first one ready, you know, from the tip. I feel like with my energy and like my personality and my charisma for this game is kind of contagious for others. You're giving up six weeks, three continents, a lot of your summer to do this. There's got to be a why for you. Dylan, what's uh, your why, man? My why is just having the pride to wear the red and white. You know, I love my country. I love 
you know, what it's brought to me. And then just, you know, trying to do something that hasn't been done in our history for basketball.